Hey everyone, it's great to see you again. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite features of Keynote. Have you ever wanted to make a presentation that involved a little bit of dynamic movement? Maybe you're a student trying to depict a process in biology or anatomy. Maybe you're someone in a business trying to show growth over time on a graph. Or maybe you're just someone who wants to add a bit of life to your text heavy, dull set of slides. Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can take your presentations and infuse incredible animations into them using Keynote. And I think you'll like it. All right, before we get into it, first things first, what is the tech that you need? For the demonstration that I am doing today, I will be using a MacBook, specifically a MacBook Air 15 inch and the desktop version of Keynote on Mac OS. This also works on the iPad version of Keynote. However, as you get into more complex animations, um, I think you begin to realize that the desktop version of Keynote has more features than the iPad version. Hence why I'm using a Mac. All right, so let's make some animations. So. Step number one, open Keynote on your Mac and create a new presentation. And just select the blank template. Now, go to your first slide, select everything in it, and press delete so that you're left with a blank slide. After this, go up to the top and click the shape button. As you'll see, Apple has a plethora of shapes that you can choose from. I'm gonna go with a circle today, very simple. Also, I like circles. And then you can just play around with it, change size, color, etc. So that is slide number one. All right, now this is the secret to how animations work on Keynote. You want to select your slide and then duplicate it. A quick shortcut for this is to press Command and D, and that should create a duplicate of your slide. So now on slide number two, the duplicate slide, move the circle to a new position. As you can see in front of you, I am moving the circle to the right. So on slide one, it's on the left, and on slide two, it's on the right. Now this is where the magic happens. Select slide one, and then in the top right, go to the animate button. And then under transitions, click add an effect, and select the magic move effect. And as you can see, magically, the circle moves from where it was in slide one, to its new position in slide two. You can play around with duration and timing to suit whatever you would like to do. And if you play your presentation, you can see your animation in action. At its core, animations on Keynote are such a simple effect to do. And if you can just wrap your mind around how this basic principle works, the possibilities are endless. For example, along with the position of the shape, you can also change the color of a shape or even the size of the shape. And then when you do your animation, it makes them even more dynamic, allowing you to represent more things. You can also have multiple objects that move into the slide and multiple objects that move out of the slide, all by thinking intentionally about how you position things going from slide to slide. A lot of this just comes from playing around with it and seeing what you think you can do with it. Okay, so aside from just making animations for fun, how can you use this more practically as a student or in work? Well, maybe you're a science student or a science teacher and you're giving a presentation on a concept like diffusion. And you're trying to show the movement of particles from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. Animations are such a great way to teach diffusion. And like the things teachers can do with this, there's so much untapped potential there. Outside of education, maybe you're working in a business and you're trying to visualize data and show the change in data on a table across time. Here's a really simple example through the use of colored rectangles uh, depicting a bar graph and how you can show the change in value over time. Here's another example of a presentation that I did in one of my anatomy subjects in university, incorporating iPad notes that I had taken and combining them with animations. Here's an example from an immunology presentation I had to do a while back, where we were trying to explain diabetes and some of the mechanisms that cause it, along with a potential remedy for addressing it. By the way, a lot of the graphics and visuals used in the animations here 
didn't come from the Apple shapes, but from a website that a lot of science students are directed to called BioRender. So if you're a science student, I really recommend BioRender. They have great graphics you can use. In one of my business units uh, in my degree, we did a presentation where we pitched an idea or a set of ideas to a group of stakeholders, for lack of a better word, in the room. And once again, it's not about overdoing it, but when used very intentionally, it, it really helps with communicating sometimes abstract concepts well, very visually. And I've seen that most probably in the way that my workplace and I have used Keynote to communicate ideas over the last couple of years. Um, uh, in particular, trying to showcase degree structures and how degrees work to students in the university who often struggle to conceptualize that. And there's plenty of other stuff. And honestly, this is just scratching the surface. Um, and I could spend hours just dissecting each of these presentations, going through them slide by slide and showing you the slide before and the slide after and the decisions I made to put it together. But what I really think would help you more is if you just went into Keynote yourself and played around with the tools and tried to keep it really simple. And even if you're a really busy student or if you're someone at work who has no time, at some point in the coming six months, you're probably gonna have to do a presentation as a student for one of your assignments. Or at work, you probably gotta communicate an idea to someone and maybe incorporating a presentation with dynamic graphics and animations like this will allow you to get your ideas to land in a better way. I honestly think once you get your mind attuned and thinking to the app, this feature of Magic Move and its limitations and its capabilities, I think it moves on from just being an app that you use to make things and to communicate. It actually becomes a tool that enables you to think differently a tool that's an extension of your mind and the way that you think. To the point where these days, Keynote is more than just a communication tool. It's a tool that I use to experiment with ideas, to take some abstract concept in my mind, whether it be in my workplace um, or somewhere else, and just try and depict it. And then I take that idea and I put it in front of someone else and it allows me to get better feedback and critique and then go back to my Keynote site and then refine my ideas further. And the reason I'm so excited to talk about tools and effects and animations like these to you, in spite of how simple they are, is because I've seen how if you adopt them in the right way, they actually have the ability to transform the way you think. And I can't think of a better compliment to give an app than that. So yeah, that's it for today's video, folks. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And as usual, if you have any questions or requests that you have for me, please leave them down in the comments below. I will check them out. Apart from that, I will see you in the next video.